So I'd like to talk a little bit more in depth when we're doing an open grade system or hybrid pavement. Um, again, that's your number 57 stone base. That's your number eight stone or number nine stone for a setting bed. Your pavers laid on top, hybrid edging, and then swept in with your polymeric uh, sand or with your easy joint. But I thought I'd go into a little bit more detail on some of the drainage issues and uh, just talking about some of the fabrics. So again, just here, I'll draw my home. This is my house. Back door here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build a patio. So coming off the home here. Say this is my patio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out a foot beyond. And again, I think I've made that really clear. I'd highly recommend a foot beyond. We dig down about a foot anyway. And so your, your fee angle of your gravels is about 45 degrees. So you want to make sure that that angle or angle of repose is the same as what you're out. So we always go a foot deep and a foot beyond. So that there you got nice positive uh, base for your, for your pavers to sit on. If you have any um, areas here that you want to push out a little bit or pull in, you got that extra base too. So it makes it really stable on your outside edges. Um, so again, your dig out is here. Right? So that's 12 inches beyond. And at that point, what we want to do is we want to lap up our fabric up the edges. So on an open grade base, if you go with your PICP, the permanent lock concrete paver, and you can follow those specs, you're going to deal with either a woven fabric like this as a real high tensile strength. You also can go with a felt fabric. And again, if this becomes a driveway application, that's going to be another whole animal. I'm not talking driveways at this point. I'm talking back yard patios and walkways. If you're doing driveway, you're getting to some larger stone and then the graduating down into smaller stone just for the bearing ability when you have vehicular traffic. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about walks and patios. So what we're going to do is we're going to use either fabric is what I would recommend. You're not talking a tremendous amount of water. Um, if you want to build a true permeable application where your water is going to dissipate down through, again, follow the um, permeable interlock concrete paver um, specs on that. But for the hybrid pavement that we're talking about today, foot beyond, fabric again, that's going to ramp up your edges. So again, your gravel all the way up the edges, up to the surface of your, of your lawn, you want to come all the way up so that when you've got your gravels in here, it wraps up and that's encapsulated. You don't have to worry about that clean stone migrating into your soils on the other side. So that's going to separate it. So that's what I would recommend for for fabric on the outside, we never do a job without fabric. It stabilizes our soils and helps that separation. So again, once this is fabriced all in, we're going to dump our clean stone. So your ASTM uh, number 57s, that's three quarter inch angular crushed stone. You want it washed, so you're nice and clean. You're going to dump that in your very little compaction. I know I've mentioned before, a 15 yard load of number 57s is going to yield you 14 and a quarter yards. If you have your dense grade, again, opposite of the clean stone, you got your dense grade the compacted gravel, that's your ASTM 2940D. Once you bring in a 15 yard load of that, you compact it to 95%, you end up with only 11 and a quarter to 11 and a half yards of yield from that product. So every three loads, you're saving yourself an entire truckload. So keep that in mind. That's one of the huge, huge savings that we have in a system like this, the compaction part of it, and then the trucking part of it. So very little compaction needed on an on a ASTM number 57 stone. Our stone gets dumped in. We grade it all off. We put down our street rails. And again, we can just show our street rails here. Right, you're going to street that all off. And before I get too far, I went and um, got ahead of myself, but on the, gra on the drainage part, you want to have this positive flow away from the home. So right here, we do not want any water sitting. You want positive flow away from the foundation. If you have a high water table or an area where you have water issues, make sure you can either use a, a pond liner along here, you can use a dense grade base along here, but you want to make sure you're sheeting the water away from that home. And again, if you have your home, 
just uh, this is your home this is your dig out down here you want to make sure and if this is grade level you want to make sure you have slope away from here so that your water can get here and this obviously your, your base is going to be pitched so you want the water all going out here and you will have some point you should have a low spot so if this is the low spot of my base depending on what your yard does this is where you really want to pay attention we want to get that water out of your base so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll dig a trench and hopefully you have a low spot here in your yard depending on where it is you can just put in a pipe out of here and then your grade comes down and again on the side this would be sloped here right your pipe and then your grass your backyard could do something like this where that actually can your water can flow right out so that's the one thing you really got to pay attention on a system like this you want to make sure you got water flowing out of your base you don't create a pond in this area another thing you can do is you can just take a trench you could fill it in with crushed stone put again a piece of fabric light fabric over the top of this and just bury it and just leave the end open and then obviously you can run your mower over it and whatnot so if you're down a foot obviously you got a little distance that you got to go to get the water out of here if you have a slope so those are the one thing that's that's kind of crucial with a system like this if you have real good draining soils and you're comfortable with that water permeating down through a real sandy situation then I think you'd be fine without a pipe but it's something you always got to pay attention to is the water so back to uh, laying screed rails we're going to screed out a number eight stone so that's your eight or nine so that's your three h chip stone again lay your screed rails take our screeder screed this out you're going to lay your pavers once all the pavers are laid throughout the whole thing we're going to take our saw right we're going to cut around the whole outside edge then after that we're going to install our edging so we're going to hybrid edging again major problem in our industry not having a simple solution for edging on the outside here um, different guys are mixing concrete that's one option obviously it's time consuming it's pretty messy um, two kinds of concrete crack and gonna crack so at some point that concrete could break up and I know that's what we've been doing for years that we did the concrete we reinforced it with some metal or steel but again, it wasn't fast, it wasn't efficient. You gotta keep your concrete dry when you get it to the job. Then you gotta find a guy to mix it. Then you gotta trowel it. And obviously you gotta be careful not to get it on your feet and then step on it. Next thing you got it on the pavers and it gets impregnated into the pores of the pavers. So you just gotta, it just led to a number of different struggles that we had. Um, we also were dealing with GeoGrid wrapped around our fabric. And again, that you gotta pre-plan and a lot of timing goes into planning that um, edging. You can't cut in place. You got to be super careful not to cut through your geo grid when you do cut in place. So a lot of different issues we had with that. So we created our own edging, and again, this is made out of high grade aluminum. And what you're going to do is we have the high grade, um, the hybrid stake. Again, that grabs enough mass. You're going to drop it down through those triangles, and that grabs enough mass, and that's going to prevent your pavers from laterally shifting. So a real simple solution, it's no new learning curve. It's, you're going to install it the same exact way. The uh, hybrid stake can be installed with a hammer, or we created this tine on top that our hammer bit that goes into our hammer drill can just drive these down into the, into the base also. So that makes it really nice. You just stand on the outside, hold your toe against here, and just you drive your stake down through. The hybrid edging can easily be snipped here, here. You can do all your different curves. You can snip out this piece here, make a real radical curve, whether it be inside or out. So really um, user friendly with the edging. Once we get our edging installed, we often get the question about what do you do about this section here? And that's a great question because that is a trouble spot. Now your, your uh, black fabric ends here at the top. You have lawn that you want up to your edge of your pavers so what do I do in this section? This is where I would highly recommend just a light fabric. We use this here, which is a light septic fabric. So very light and obviously being used for septic, it has free draining. So it can allow the moisture to travel through it. And we'll take this. Again, our, our pavers are here. Our base is out there, our stone. We'll cut strips here and we'll just lay this along. 
right on top of that clean stone. Then we bring our topsoil right in, and obviously our pavers are up here. It gives you a nice, a solid three inches of topsoil before it hits that stone. But this here allows you to separate your, your topsoil from your stone. So that's another area that we get a lot of questions on. So advantages to hybrid pavement again, free draining, less compaction, less trucking when you're using clean stone. The uh, water dissipates quickly and easily, so less chance of efflorescence. Again, when you have your C33 and your dense grade, that water kind of sits in there and it can, the moisture can wick up through the paver. That's what's going to bring that efflorescence to the surface. With an open grade system like this, water dissipates quickly, less chance of efflorescence. So simple uh, hybrid edging on the outsides, you're going to save a lot of time and a lot of energy installing in a process like this.